often when we think about call options and put options, we think about chances for big payouts. So if I buy a call option and the stock price goes up significantly, I can make a two, three, four hundred percent return. If I buy a put option and the stock price drops dramatically, I can make a two or three, four hundred percent return. But we can also use options to reduce risk and create narrower payoff patterns. So if we buy an option and sell an option on the same underlying stock, we have a spread. And the spread we're going to look at in this example is referred to as a condor spread. With this, we're buying one deep in the money call and one deep out of the money call. And we're writing one near the money call that's in the money and one near the money call that's out of the money. So in my example here, the stock's trading for between 330 and 335. So the two near the monies that we're writing are the March 330 and the March 335. And the ones we're buying are the March 325 and the March 340. Now note, I can change these. I could buy a March 310 and a March 350 if I wanted. As long as the deep in the money and out of the money are further away than the narrow in the money and out of the money, I have a condor spread. It's just going to change the depth of the contract a little bit. My potential profits and potential losses are going to get a little more spread out or narrower, but the shape of the payoff pattern is going to be the same. Now, when I'm doing complex options, I like to start with the initial cash flow. How much does it cost me to create the position? So in this case, I'm going to start with the two contracts I'm buying. Because I'm buying them, it's a cash outflow, and one contract is 100 options. So I take the 100 options times that $25.75 per option. Then I go to my March 340. Again, I'm buying that, so it's a cash outflow. That one's going to cost me $18.20. And then I go to the 330. Since I'm writing that, it's a cash inflow. I want to make it positive. And that one's going to cost me, or going to generate $23.10. Then my last one, my March 335, is going to generate $20.50. So now I go ahead and do the calculations on that to figure out how much my initial cash flow is. Notice I wrote 25.76 there instead of 75. Get that corrected. So I have an outflow of 25.75. I have another outflow of 18.20. Then I have an inflow of 2,310 and an inflow of 2050. This gives me an initial cash flow of $35. Now note that is before any commissions or anything like that, so we're ignoring transaction costs. With transaction costs, my initial outflow is going to be a little bit higher. And now I say, well, what happens at various price points? Let's look at 270. At 270, all of these options are going to expire worthless. So the March 325 that I own, the March 340 that I own, they're going to expire worthless. The March 330 that I wrote, the March 335 that I wrote, they're going to expire worthless. So my net cash flow is going to be just that $35 cash outflow. That's going to be true everywhere up to 325. At 325, now they're still going to all expire worthless, but now I'm right at the break point. So I'm still going to have a loss of $35 at 325, but at 325, every dollar the stock price goes up, this March 325 is going to generate a profit. So now I'm going to start making money all the way up until. I get to 330 and then it's going to be offset by this one. So at 330, I'm going to start with my 325 call. 
that's going to generate a profit of $500, 100 times $5 per option, and still I'm down at $35 initial investment, which means I have a profit of $465. Now as I go up to 335, I'm still making an extra dollar on this 325 call, but the 330 call that I wrote is going to offset that. So as it goes from 330 to 331, I get an extra hundred dollars, but I lose a hundred dollars. So my net is not going to change. I'm going to have 500 and I'm going to lose the 35. I've got 465. That's going to be true up until 335. Once I get to 335, now I'm making a dollar here. I'm losing a dollar and I'm losing a dollar. So now I'm losing two dollars to offset every dollar that I make. So by the time I get to 340, I now have made the 500 and I've turned around and lost that extra 500, plus I've lost the 35, I'm back down to my $35 profit. At 390, again, the same thing. I make 500 between 325 and 330, I lose 500 between 335 and 340, so my Profits and losses offset each other, and I'm still down to $35 it cost me to create the position, which means I have a net loss of $35 on this trade. That's going to continue no matter how high the price drops, how far the price goes down. My maximum loss is $35, and that's going to occur everywhere less than 325 and everywhere more than 340. My maximum profit is $465 and that's going to occur between 330 and 335. That's my maximum profit in that $5 range. And then my break-even points are going to occur somewhere just above 325 and somewhere just below or just above or just below 340. So if I look at 325, I've got to make $35 off of that. Remember that 35 is total, so 35 cents per option. So it's going to be 325 plus 35 to offset that. That's going to be $325.35. That's my break even point on the low end. My break even point on the high end is going to be $340 less at 35 cents. So that's going to be $339.65. So I'm going to have two break even points. And what that payoff pattern is going to look like is this everywhere below 330 or 325. I have that set $35 loss. Everywhere at 340 and up, I have that set $35 loss. And then I have a spike up to 465 and back down between 325 and 340. So that $15 window is what I'm looking for. And ideally, this $5 window where I maximize my profits is where I'd like to be. So that gives you an overview of a condor spread.